Okay, guys, so let's get right to it. Um, this, this knife here, the one that was on the far left, this isn't, well, let me back up a little bit. All these knives belong to a man named Steve Hawk. Like the bird, Hawk. Like One Hawk or Yellow Hawk. Custom Outdoors. Customs Outdoors. <laughs> anyway. Steve Hawk is who owns all those knives. This one belongs to my IT guy, John Mistro. I tell you, for all the hard work he's done for me in the last few months, I had to do something special for him. You know what I mean? So, he bought this knife. It was given to him. Yeah, actually, it was given to him as a, as a wedding present. Everybody knows that John... Just got married, I guess about a month ago, month and a half. This is a blackjack knife. I, I can't remember the model, uh, maybe a Model 5? I don't know. Okay, blackjack knife, uh, A2 tool steel. I'm not a big uh, rat tail tang knife guy, but if you're gonna get one, a rat tail tang, uh, blackjack's pretty good. Randall knives are excellent. There's a few others on the market out there. However, the rat tail, it's just, it's weaker, okay? If you're gonna do a lot of heavy work with this knife, you gotta be careful. Because I have seen, even Randall's, uh, when I was in the military, guys had Randall's, and I've seen a couple of them break right here at the hilt. Right where it, where it steps down, snaps off with, with hard work. You really got to be working hard with them. These guys were not abusing those blades. They were working hard with them, though. We were building shelters in the Uari National Forest down in North Carolina. And the guy broke his Randall. <laughs> he was pissed. <laughs> I would have been, too. All right, anyway. Blackjack knives. It's got a stacked leather handle, and they're one of the better companies for stacked leather, leather handles. They're you know nice and uniform. All the, all the discs are tight tight together. They got a pommel nut on the end that they actually crank down, and it and it squeezes all this together, makes it really tight, including the the uh, the pommel on the back. So this one belongs to John Mistro. Wait for it. Oh man, I tell you. So I wanted to do something nice for him. So here's his system. Atax Vista 093. Nice, strong, military grade. Kydex. Here's the back. It's got a uh, live fire. Now, John basically I told him I was going to do this, and he said, you know, build one the way you would want it. Well, this has everything on it that I like on a sheath. For, you know, within reason. Okay? It's got... Now, he likes ceramics for finishing up and touching up the blade. I, I prefer diamond hones for the field. John likes ceramics, so I made him... A ceramic sharpener that sits in the holder the, uh, the shock cord comes around any way you want to do it and it the, the lip the lip of the thumb grab here fits behind the sheath it's nice and tight not going anywhere it doesn't rattle face mount ferro rod John likes these uh, these kydex thumb holds so I, when I do a sheath for him, I usually do the Kydex thumb holes um, because he, he, just, he just prefers them. Um, face mount ferro rod, same thing with the Kydex thumb holes. Liquid filled compass. This is the decent compass. You can see where I've milled out right here. I do that sometimes in certain applications so that that cord 
doesn't slip off the end. You can see that the ferro rod doesn't stick out of the end too too far. So I, I mill that slot in there so it sits up in there and it won't pop off. Live fire. Just push it from this way. Use your pinky. All right. You can do it with gloves. I do it with gloves. Push it out. Use your live fire. Now it takes a little bit to get it back in, but it snaps in there. Okay. So there's that. The tech lock can be reconfigured four different ways on this sheath. Four different ways. It pretty much takes care of all the popular carries. And a tabby dangler with a shore up plate. This is three layers thick, this Kydex. One, two, three. Three layers thick. Very strong. I mean really, really strong. So there's that one. All right, this is um, this is actually cowhide that I have dyed and waxed myself. I'll get into cowhide in another video. I want to talk about tanning processes. All right, so there's that. It you know I, I bevel the edges, I burnish them, then I re-dye the edges, and it comes out where the edges are a little darker than the. It's 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 a trick, you know. It's an old trick that leather workers use to make it look nice, pretty, aesthetic. Tough as hell. With that wax in there, <clears throat> very weatherproof. Very weatherproof. They'll still get wet, but really preserves the, the the leather well. Okay. Steve Hawk. Here's the first one. This is a traditional kukri made in Nepal out of that Mercedes-Benz spring steel 1060 I think or 1070 something like that about a quarter inch at the spine tapers down nice belly these 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 puppies are made for chopping all right that's mainly their purpose you can work with them if he if he had a choke up choil right here like it would be easy to put one on this blade choke up choil here you could do some finer tasks with this right inside the the uh, the bend there and if any of you guys have kukris it is normal not to have the edge go all the way to the sharpening choil so that basically the edge starts right about here all this is just flat steel so that's that's normal in kukris, traditional kukris. When you're chopping, <clears throat> usually right about here is where you want the point of contact. You get a lot of forward momentum with this canted curve here. So anyway, here it is. All right, you gotta be careful when you when you I call these pop tops. When you use a pop top, you gotta make sure you got the blade in there first. All right. Shove it all the way forward, and then drive her home. Very secure, not coming out of there unless you take it out. No rattle, it's not gonna, well, it does rattle because of the, the hardware. The blade doesn't rattle in the sheath at all. Steve wanted a easy lap diamond home with a compression fit. He did not want a shock core retention on it. Neither can I put one on one of these. It just doesn't work. Not effectively. Because you got to be able to take this thing out, pull it apart, and then put it back together again in order to use it. So, I can't really put a retention, but I can put a compression retention on it, which is very effective. As long as you got the strength to pull it out. Some guys I know we have, you know, I'm starting with a little bit of arthritis in my knuckles. I understand that. If you have any physical limitations, let me know. Arthritis, a gimp hand, whatever. Okay? Um, no offense with that gimp hand thing. It's just, that's what I call it. A gimp hand. Uh, no offense. Compression fit. 
you know I'll, I'll lighten up the compression fit if you need me to I just don't want that thing coming out of there with changes in temperature humidity and whatnot kydex is affected by that somewhat so I make them fairly tight so that you're not going to lose your sharpener face mount ferro rod with a decent liquid filled compass on it not a Sunto his other ones got Suntos this one just a standard that's what he wanted and a Baldrick system okay he just wanted a horizontal Baldrick system he didn't want vertical so there we go there it is this is how you put it on that's how you wear it you know you can swing it out of the way if you're not using it around to the back okay move my Tavi out of the way all right so one more time pull it up pop it out put it back in you can see where it's flared there just snaps into place no problem the sling does not come with the system that the sling is extra I put it on there for demonstration purposes only so Steve, if you want a sling, I have it. It's just it's going to be extra, brother. Um, I get those from Beach and Tactical. They're they're bomb-proof slings. Uh, you know, in the you know the weatherproof. It's it's you know it's paracord and nylon webbing. Extremely weatherproof. You know, for military guys and military guys love that synthetic stuff, Kydex, and you know it's just a no-brainer for them. Okay, next one. This is a Chris Reeves Pacific. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about Chris Reeves Knife Company. That knife company began back in 1984 in South Africa. I, I can't remember the name of the town. He lived in Sa South Africa. This knife is made of CPM S35VN, a super steel, which I tell you, I like this knife. I'm not really keen on the serrations, but there's a reason the serrations are there. The kind of guys who buy this knife, this is a combat knife. Utility, fighting, combat, and a very effective one to boot. Black sandblasted micarta scales. His handles, you know, every every four months or so I pick up a knife that just feels great in the hand the palm swell is perfect the finger choil the the, the, uh, the shave outs here near the hilt just perfect you can actually pull back on this for a little bit of chopping action this is a Chris Reeve handles are very comfortable he's got these these milled out slots here that just give you that extra purchase and the sandblasted micarta just over the top. So these, a lot of counterfeits out there of Chris Reeve knives. So just be careful of that. He's one of the most counterfeited knives around because of how popular his knives are. So those counterfeiters like to make them, and I tell you, it's hard to tell the difference sometimes I've seen counterfeits of Chris Reeve knives that you would swear were made by him. And like the only person that can tell is him, <laughs> you know? So you take a picture of it, you send it to him and he'll tell you whether he made it or not. He's, he's, he's pretty pissed off at, about the counterfeiting. Okay, Chris Reeve Pacific. good solid click this is a sear one survival model it's got a pouch on the front he wanted a Sunto compass on this one with a ferro rod in the webbing couldn't really put it anywhere else diamond hone sharpener on the side this is about a 700 grit Altoids tin assembly on the back with A live fire inside of it and then you got room for other stuff as well okay that clicks in there no problem not gonna come out it's not gonna fall out it doesn't rattle um, it does rattle right now 
because it's got that live fire in it. But once you pack stuff around it, tinder material or band-aids or whatever, it's, it's going to sit well for you. So there it is. Chris Reeves Pacific. Belongs to Steve Hawk. Beautiful knife. Beautiful knife. Good job, Chris. <laughs> Top Silent Hero. This is one of my favorite knives that they that they build, that Tops builds. I got, they've got quite a few that I like. I like I like the Silent Hero. It's this is a, a perfect all around. Well, not perfect. I'll get into that. <laughs> a perfect all around bush knife combat fighting utility. You know, all that rolled up into one. It, you know, you can bushcraft with it, guys. You know who, who camp a lot like this knife it can chop slice make notches feather stick as long as it's got the right edge on it all right there it is the only thing that's not perfect about this knife in my opinion is the handle it's a little too thin i think they need to beef up those scales a little bit but it works it does work and his tops Hog 4.5. Zach built this one. Beautiful. Got a compass on the back that's actually set into the Kydex and milled out. <laughs> Zach is really getting good. I'm impressed. It's hard to impress me with Kydex, but he's good. It's got a uh, Inova Microlite, just like we do the eBay sheaths. That's how this is. All right, there it is. This one, just in case he wants a tabby dangler uh, in the future, I put a tabby dangler on it. Uh, just the actual plate part, the actual tab, not the plate. Okay, guys, that's it for this round. This is Doug Wilson from Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.